Good evening and welcome to the candidate forum for the 2020 District 11 San Francisco Board of Supervisors election. I'm Allison Go, the president of the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. And tonight, before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to remember the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was a powerful advocate for women's rights and civil rights, arguing for equality regardless of age, race, sexual orientation, or gender. She was a fierce fighter of voting rights, authoring the famous dissent in Shelby Counter v. Holder that said gutting the Voting, Racks, voting Rights Act of 1965 was like throwing away your umbrella in a rainstorm because you're not getting wet. Justice Ginsburg's wisdom, determination, and dedication to equal rights embodied the League's belief in the power of women to create a more perfect democracy. And our members would not be where we are today without the career-long work of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The League of Women Voters of San Francisco is a nonpartisan political nonprofit that encourages informed and active participation in government. The League never supports or opposes candidates. However, we do take stands on issues. This year's election presents new and unprecedented challenges for voters, and we are committed to providing the resources that voters need to exercise this most fundamental right of our democracy and be assured that their votes will be counted. Please remember that you must be registered to vote by October 19th. All registered voters will receive a mail ballot in early October. And options for in-person voting will be available as well, um, both early and also on election day, November 3rd. Please visit our website at lwvsf.org vote, where you will find all of the voter resources that we offer. The League of Women Voters is a nonprofit organization. If you would like to support our work in free events such as this one, please become a member or donate to our website at lwvsf.org. I am now pleased to introduce Luam Tesfe, our moderator for tonight. Luam is a San Francisco attorney who has served on the board of the League of Women Voters of San Francisco for the last seven years. She was appointed by the Board of Supervisors to the League's seat on the Sunshine Ordinance Task Force in 2016 and was appointed by Governor Newsom as the Chief of Staff to, at the California Public Utilities Commission in 2019. Welcome, Luam. Thank you, Allison, and welcome to the candidates for San Francisco District 11 Board of Supervisors. The candidates will have a chance to present their views on issues affecting the city and to answer questions about those issues that were submitted in advance for tonight's forum. First, I'd like to remind you of our ground rules. Responses to questions should be on the issues and policy related. Candidates are expected to be respectful of other candidates and asked to not make personal attacks on other individuals. Here are the procedures for this evening's forum. The candidates will have the opportunity to make 90 second opening and closing statements. Opening statements will be in alphabetical order by first name. Closing statements will be in reverse alphabetical order by first name. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to answer questions. The order of answering each question will be wrote among the candidates. Each candidate will have the opportunity to answer the same number of questions. Any rebuttals may be included in the candidate's closing statement which will be 90 seconds. A countdown timer will be displayed with a visual indication of the remaining time for a response. Every aspect of the forum will be equally fair to all candidates. Thank you to our attendees tonight. You are in listen only mode. The Q&A and chat features are not active. This forum will be recorded and made available on our website, lwvsf.org, our YouTube channel, and on SFGov TV cable channels. 
you have many important decisions to make by November 3rd. Tonight's forum will give you an opportunity to learn before you vote. Now let's begin. We will start off with 90 second opening statements in alphabetical order. And thank you for participating in this forum. Please introduce yourself, tell us which neighborhood you live in and why you are running for District 11 Supervisor. We'll start with Asa Safai. You're on mute. Okay, sorry. Uh, my name is Supervisor Asha Safai. Thank you to the San Francisco League of Women Voters for having me tonight. Um, I proudly represented this district for the last four years. When I first ran for office, um, I had just been working with organized labor for almost a decade and cared deeply about being a strong voice for working families. Uh, district 11 is, uh, has one of the highest concentrations of uh, children and family under the age of 18. And we are the backbone of San Francisco. We're the teachers, the nurses, the firefighters, the nonprofit workers, the people that get up and make San Francisco work on every single day. And for the last four years, I've been a strong voice for those families. I've been fighting for those families every day, whether it was our green jobs legislation, whether it was fighting to ensure that we had accessible, affordable childcare, uh, or whether it was having uh, an all-female staff when I first uh, was elected to the Board of Supervisors. Very proud of that. And in this week, uh, um, honoring uh, Justice Ginsburg, I'm very proud to say that the San Francisco's Political Women's Committee, along with Planned Parenthood of Northern California, have given me their sole endorsements. I've been a fighter and working hard for my district. I'm very proud and I look forward to another four years. Thank you. John Avalos. Good evening, it's really great to be here. My name is John Avalos and I'm a 22 year resident of District 11. I live in the Excelsior uh, neighborhood of District 11. I'm a father of two, a uh, fiance to Raquel Redondias and living in a blended family with her. I uh, have a student at uh, Balboa High School in our family and graduate from Balboa High School as well, living with us. Uh, we're well connected to this neighborhood um, and uh, really excited to be having this incredible experience uh, to represent working class immigrant communities, communities of color in District 11, people who are uh, the backbone of San Francisco, essential workers, people who are teachers and uh, restaurant workers, a lot of people who are dealing with unemployment at this time. We are in a real difficult situation uh, with the, the pandemic and the economic crisis that we're in. And I'm looking to bring back uh, all of my work I did at the Board of Supervisors, working citywide to make sure we could uh, have the resources for the entire city, but also working with residents here in District 11 to make sure that we can rebuild our parks and commercial corridors. Uh, we can actually make sure we have childcare for our families, uh, that we have families that uh, have support from our schools and social workers. I look forward to talking with you about my agenda this evening. Thank you. Marcelo Colosi. Thank you very much. Um, for having me tonight. My name is Marcelo Colusi. I am running for supervisor for San Francisco District 11. I have been living here for 15 years in this district and the Excelsior. Um, <clears throat> I am running because I am a handyman who is in everybody's houses all the time. And I cannot tell you enough how people are uh, so upset about what's going on with our city. And I think that we need drastic change to actually take care of what really matters without doing politics in between and just doing what is the most efficient for our residents. Um, that's actually why I'm running for Supervisor District 11, San Francisco. Thank you. Now we will move on to our questions for tonight. We'll start with Asha. How do you define affordable housing and what specific actions will you take to increase affordable housing in District 11? 
Thank you. Uh, when I first got on the Board of Supervisors, we were able to engage uh, on the inclusionary housing policy. That's where we ask private developers and anyone that's building housing in the city to set aside a certain percentage of their housing as affordable or below market rate. And one of the first uh, debates that we had at the board was what was affordable and affordable for whom? Because so f for so long, affordable in this city has only been defined as extremely low income. And what that meant is teachers, nurses, janitors, nonprofit workers, people that for many years could afford to live in District 11 primarily in a working class neighborhood could no longer afford to live in San Francisco. So I'm very proud to say that we were able to expand the definition slightly. Um, and um, prior to me coming into office, probably about 17 units of affordable housing were built and we have almost 600 units in the pipeline 65% uh, of that housing will be set aside for as, as affordable. Um, two of those are private deals and two of those are 100% affordable deals. We've been able to work with the mayor also to purchase the largest small sites acquisition in the city's history, 25 units here on Mission Street, which will preserve those units as affordable in perpetuity. Uh, so we have expanded the definition of affordable housing we're currently building affordable housing, and we will continue to ensure that that housing will be available to working families. Thank you. Marcelo, same question. You're on mute. Thank you. Uh, affordable, affordable housing for me specifically is the people that work in our neighborhood on minimum wage that can afford to stay around here. And, and that, personally, I don't think that's gonna end until the city of San Francisco actually does their own development. When you think about it, um, they have 45,000 employees, they have $12 billion budget. The only reason that the housing is so expensive, uh, besides that they are, uh, uh, the only reason the housing are so expensive is that actually uh, developers are trying to make a profit out of it. And the moment that you have profit in between, it will not stop. Uh, the city need to open their own developing company, definitely use some contractors, but they have everything. They are the power in town. They have the right and they have, they have everything to do it. John. Thank you. Um, affordable housing to me is where our housing costs no more than uh, what a household of uh, 120% area median income can afford where they're paying no more than 30% uh, of their income uh, for uh, housing. Uh, I also believe that we need to be building housing no more than that, uh, that rate, but also uh, a largest, the largest amount of housing that is deeply affordable. Here in District 11, we have a lot of households that are bundled up uh, into single homes uh, and crammed in and need relief. Um, a lot of them are very low income, uh, and would need, uh, would benefit from having deeply affordable housing. Uh, for me, I've been working for years to expand uh, fin finances for housing, uh, affordable housing in San Francisco, looking at various sources from our general fund to housing bonds. I actually wrote the housing bond of 2015 and I wrote uh, with the mayor of San Francisco, the housing trust fund in 2012. Uh, I'm excited about Propositions I and Propositions K that are on the ballot that are actually going to tax uh, real estate transfers uh, to bring in money for uh, creation of, of municipal housing. Prop K would create uh, the ability for the city to create municipal housing. And overall, I want to create a public bank that will actually play a role in determining and shaping the market for how we build housing that's affordable for all in San Francisco. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with Marcelo. How will you work to ensure that the current residents of District 11 will be able to remain in their homes given the increased cost of living in San Francisco and the economic downturn due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, to do that is gonna have to be involved everybody the landlords, the tenants, the city. You have landlords who are making money out of the properties. You have landlords who are barely making it or, or going uh, on the red. 
And because of that, you have to go case by case to figure out who can help, who is in deep trouble, because the moment that those landlords are going to actually lose their home and go into foreclosure, those tenants are going to have to leave the house, and it's going to be the same issue. The banking industry, as soon as they get a foreclosure, um, uh, green lights, they're going to start kicking people out. We're going to have a huge crisis, and we have to prevent that. We have to work with that political issues in between, and we have to work with the whole board of supervisors, support the mayor, trying to work for our residents and create new laws that will actually keep our people, keep our uh, residents at home. Thank you. John? It's uh, really tough to see what's happening right now for a lot of uh, people living uh, in the city and of course in District 11, uh, households who are unemployed or getting less unemployment money um, are now making difficult choices, whether to pay rent or their mortgage or to put food on the table. These are real life issues and have a lot to do with uh, what we've been experiencing for years, but now heightened during uh, the pandemic and this economic crisis. Uh, as supervisor, I worked on creating various uh, methods to be able to help people stay in their homes, um, advancing tenant rights and eviction protections. We need to continue that and strengthen our efforts uh, in the city around that. Um, I wrote legislation to actually make it difficult to uh, destroy rental housing, and that has actually protected thousands of units here in San Francisco and in District 11. I've also made it easier to be able to set up ADUs and to make sure that accessory dwelling units, uh, um, in-law units, are able to uh, stay uh, up and, and running, and we have funds in the city and DBI that's available for people to renovate those. I created uh, support in our housing bond to support homeowners who want to modify their loans, and I worked to create principal reduction programs in San Francisco. I want to revive all of these uh, programs so that we can actually ensure that a wide variety of people, homeowners uh, and renters, uh, can stay in San Francisco and not be threatened uh, by the crisis that we're in and have faith that we can actually keep our residents here in the city. Thank you. Asha? Thank you. I think, I think there's a, this is a very a, a good question. It's about the immediate. It's about what are we going to do to help people right now, today? because people are being uh, evicted, they're losing their jobs, they're getting sick, and how do we, how do we help them? So one of the first things we did uh, uh, was, uh, while as supervisor, we were able to create an eviction moratorium. So no one will be evicted right now during this emergency health crisis. We work with our mayor, we work with the state, uh, myself, uh, Supervisor Dean Preston and others put that forward, I'm very proud to have done that. Um, but we also need to have rental assistance. If people have rental assistance, they can pay their rent. Small, uh, small landlords and others will help have the help that they need to pay their mortgages. Um, so uh, District 11, 94112, has the highest number of requests for rental assistance. And we've helped to facilitate that, working with the Q Foundation. On a daily basis, people are calling our office requesting assistance to pay their rent. The other thing that we need to do is we also need to help open our economy back up in a safe manner. We've moved to Orange. Myself and Supervisor Peskin worked on legislation, uh, what's called our Healthy Buildings and Hotel Ordinance. That will allow people to go back to work safely. And San Francisco is a leader in the nation in that regard. When people go back to work, they have to know if they get sick, they'll still be able to keep their job. So we created 80 hours of sick leave to help them. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with John. What are your plans to bring equity in jobs, education, and economic development for the Black communities in District 11, especially in the Lakeview and Sunnydale neighborhoods? Thank you. Um, I'm um, proud to have worked on the local hiring ordinance uh, back in 2010. I was the sponsor of it. Uh, and worked closely with the African-American community, uh, with Mike Brown, um, who was the director of inner city youth back at that time, uh, to make sure that we were creating uh, jobs with our public funds uh, when we actually build public municipal buildings. Um, that's resulted in thousands of people 
uh, being able to find access to jobs in our building trades uh, here in San Francisco. Um, and as a supervisor, I've actually worked um, over the years to develop uh, the uh, Lakeview Community Collaborative, the OMI Community Collaborative that has resulted in a lot of organizations uh, working together to advocate for a budget uh, that serves them, uh, that keeps programs running and going. Uh, it's been great to see that uh, the work has been ongoing and that based on that organization that we initiated back in 2010, that uh, there's a workforce center now uh, on uh, Broad Street. Uh, as supervisor, I want to do much more to actually look at the private sector and how we can do local hiring uh, in the private sector. And anyone who wants to be setting up shop here, that we're actually investing a lot of our resources from the Office of Economic and Workforce Development to be able to provide uh, small businesses their support uh, to hire local residents. Thank you. Asha? Thank you. That's a great question. Um, if, if the folks in District 11 have felt forgotten and not uh, given the attention that they need, uh, Black Lakeview felt even more that way uh, before I came into office. One of the first things we did is we looked at the statistics. We looked at where the dropout rate was. We looked at where the incarceration rate was, where the death rate, where the uh, high school dropout rate and homelessness rate was. And based on those statistics from day one, we asked for, advocated, and fought for resources to go into Black Lakeview. Um, very proud to say we opened up the first job center um, in the district in that regard, right there on Broad and Capitol. The mayor and I uh, cut the ribbon on that last year. Um, we are building a brand new library over in that part of town. It'll be the largest neighborhood library. Uh, we have invested in Black-led uh, organizations, uh, IT Bookman, Inner City Youth, and Youth First all of which are working with promoting, investing in and leading uh, uh, the black community over in Lakeview. I think that's what equity looks like for this district in so many different ways. And we didn't wait to the more recent uh, movement of Black Lives Matter. We've been doing that at day one. Another important part of that is empowering, uplifting and allowing folks from the black community to lead and advocate for themselves. Um, and that's what happened in a movement that we called Invest Black. Many of the folks in the community led that um, they put their, their stamp and, uh, on Broad Street, and we're very, very proud of, of that work. Thank you. Marcelo? I personally think that the American dream is not to own your own house. The American dream is to own your own business. And, and what we have to do is to train people to actually open their own business and to train them on how to, to work with their own businesses. Even if it means replacing some part of the zoning, where somebody can have a small business, uh, a kiosk in their house. They will not have to commute. They will not have to do anything. They will be producing money on, on a daily basis. And part of, of my uh, idea is just to have small businesses all over the place that can actually support each other. When you have a um, concession and people were work working for corporations, those corporations have closed down shop and they leave and those people are out of work. When you have a small businesses owned by the residents of the neighborhood, those, neighbor, those small businesses survive and they, they thrive later when the economy comes back. Uh, the idea is just to push as much as we can to train and to actually work with the residents to be able to open their own businesses. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with Marcelo. What do you consider to be the most important community development and infrastructure improvements needed for District 11? How will you advocate for the funding of these projects? So I think that traffic safety is, is one of the main issues, uh, being able to walk on the streets, to be able to do uh, to, to walk to your neighborhood store. Uh, housing, being able to do housing through the city, uh, I think that developing that part is, is huge for our community, especially because like the other can say, we have most of the children, those children will be able to stay in those housing. They will be able to go to public school and those public schools will actually um, uh, 
if we increase the, the, the funding for public school, will actually uh, would give up good education to our, our kids. And those kids will be able to be rehired in the city of San Francisco instead of having people coming from all over the place, two, three years, moving to the city and then leaving. Uh, those families, we own it to the family in San Francisco. We have to work on those projects uh, to be able to uplift our community. Thank you. John? Thank you. Actually, I love the question about community development. Uh, it was one of my greatest focuses uh, when I was supervisor is working with the community from the grassroots up to define what we need uh, for our district so we can thrive and live and remain in the district. Um, but now we're in real tough times and we need to look at how to make real bold action. Uh, and the greatest thing that we can do around community development is to have a whole new ec economic uh, economy centered around our sustainable future. And for me, it's a Green New Deal. A Green New Deal that is actually gonna encompass all of our infrastructure that we're gonna need for sustainability. Number one of that is gonna be housing and making sure we have the housing investment. So I mentioned some of our resources that we have on the ballot uh, this year, Prop I and Prop K. Uh, we also have other resources that have just recently been approved with um, the uh, Prop C that has now been, the funds have been released so we can use money for uh, support of housing needs for a lot of people who are homeless in our district. We also need to put money into uh, transit and build jobs around uh, the creation of uh, transit based on renewable energy. Our parks are really a vital resource and especially during the pandemic, we need a place to find access to nature and release ourselves. Um, and uh, I want to be part of uh, creating an urban ag system here in District 11 that can actually help with our mutual aid uh, efforts and small business efforts. Uh, and overall, we need to put our investments in our clean streets so our neighborhood corridors can thrive. That's why I'm supporting Prop B to change DPW. Thank you. Asha? Thank you. I, a really important question about infrastructure for District 11 specifically. Um, a lot of the stuff we're working on right now, uh, one, one of the biggest things on the ballot this fall is Prop A, um, which is our mental health and our health and recovery bond, also for our parks. Uh, we, I advocated to ensure the Crocker Amazon was included in that. Uh, the San Francisco Giants are going to supplement that. That would be a $30 million investment. More than that for Crocker Park, it's one of the most neglected and lack of investment. And the last time it got investment was in 2008 by the Fisher family that redid the soccer fields. Uh, but I daily basis, I get calls about that. Another one is Excelsior Playground. Definitely needs to be revitalized and re redone, um, another park. And then continuing the housing. Uh, we're in the process of building more housing that has ever been built in District 11. We have to see those projects through and we have to find other opportunities to build more workforce housing and affordable housing. Um, those are the top priorities that I would have. The final one is, is something that I'm very proud of is the library. We're going to create the largest neighborhood library in the entire city. It's on the corner of Orizaba and Brotherhood. Uh, we have, went, are going to go from the smallest neighborhood library to the largest neighborhood library. And then finally, um, we have a $20 million upgrade to our transportation improvements. We have some of the highest injury corridors in the entire city at Mission and Geneva and that will begin in the spring. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with Asha. What types of services currently handled by the police would you support being transferred to other services? What specific plans for the changes would you require to be in place before the change is implemented? It's a great question. One of the, some of the largest number of calls we get are people that are unhoused, people with mental health issues, and the police uh, are often the first ones to respond. Um, in this ballot, we, as I said, Prop A will have dollars for mental health. Uh, very excited to see that we're going to have additional dollars for mental health SF. It was one of the key votes to ensure that that passed, working with my colleagues, Supervisor Hillary Ronan, Matt Haney, and the mayor. Um, with those dollars, we have money to provide mental health services. With our crisis response team and the Prop C being unlocked, winning that in the courts, 
that will open up additional dollars for, for mental health services. The police can shift their focus away. It's one of the highest volume calls they get, have to do with mental health, have to do with our unhoused. That would be something that we can have mental health professionals respond to. Um, and the transition on that will allow and free up the police to do more uh, crisis response. We have a plague in this, in this district of sideshows, people that are using their vehicles to do dangerous stunts. Those are the kind of things that the police should be responding to. And those are the kind of things that need to be stopped and suppressed and create safety in our district. And then when we are able to have the resources, which we do now, will come more. We have to have mental health professionals responding to those that are unhoused and have mental health crisis. And we have the ability to do that and transition nicely. Thank you. John? Uh, thank you. We have uh, across the country calls about defunding the police. Uh, and uh, I've been actually looking at that issue and what that really means. And often we just hear the slogan, but we don't hear what, how we actually implement that. Uh, for me, um, what we need to be doing is transforming completely how we do public safety work in San Francisco uh, and across the country. Um, our policing has been based on uh, racist institutions going back, you know, 150, 200 years, uh, and we need to actually remake entirely how we do it. Uh, so for me, it's narrowing the scope of uh, the intervention work that the police department does uh, to respond to more violent incidents, uh, but also putting a lot of resources into prevention, making sure that people have access to mental health uh, health care and substance use care and housing and support around uh, everyday life issues that are out there. Uh, we need to be looking at how, before we can actually defund, we have to be putting in uh, the resources like social workers and case managers and mental health clinicians and people who can help people sort through their substance use disorder. Uh, that's often a cause that the police are involved in. So we can actually have those in place before we start uh, limiting the size of the police department. That's vital that we do that work up front or else we're just making a cut with nothing there to replace it. I was really alarmed that uh, we didn't do that work right now when the budget was wide open before us. We have a lot of people in District 11 who could use access to uh, substance abuse services, mental health services, and a drop-in center, a place to go to the bathroom, but nothing was put in the budget this year for that. Thank you. Thank you. Marcelo? Thank you. Um, so, define defunding the police. Where are we going to go the resources? Are we going to pull resources from a new high academy? Are we going to pull resources for the police uh, gas for their cars? what is it this is the main questions we definitely need more resources personally i think um on mental health crisis which has become an epidemic in san francisco uh, on, on drug use issues which is also an issue i was an emt uh and i can tell you it was bad during that time now it has gone out of control uh, the police department needs resources uh, like every department now the question is do we have enough police on the streets to take care of the issue that cares to the residents that are paying taxes are actually getting a 4 5 a.m. to go to work? We have to look at this on a much deep uh, uh, way than just cutting funding uh, at the police department. I do believe that we need a lot more help on mental health. Um, the city is this is the main issue I'm running because the city is having some tough times and this is, this is not acceptable anymore. This is, people are done. I'm in people's houses every day and people usually don't like me because I'm the handyman and people are done. It's unbelievable what San Francisco has come to. And at this time, uh, you know, like I said before, I think- Thank you. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with John. How will you advocate for the current and future educational needs of children living in District 11? Thank you. Um, I'm really proud to have uh, kind of come out of uh, Coleman Advocates for Children and Youth, an organization that's based in uh, District 11 uh, that is on the forefront of looking at education for children and youth in in San Francisco. I was a community organizer with Coleman Advocates and with Coleman uh, worked in 2000, 20 years ago to reauthorize the Children's Fund. Uh, and then again, as supervisor in 2014, 
I had the first uh, draft of the Children's Fund that expanded uh, money for children, youth, and family services, early childhood education services, as well as transitional age youth, uh, as well as expand the funding from the Ed Fund uh, for our schools. This is going to be a tremendous source of funding, but we also have a ballot measure that's vitally important that we pass uh, for um, our, our teachers. It's a parcel tax. I can't remember the number or the letter of it right now. It's um, and we need to pass uh, our Schools and Community First initiative, Prop 15, on the California ballot that will bring greater resources for our education program. It was night and day the difference between 1978 and 1979 when Prop 13 passed. Now we can fix that. I look forward to working with community and labor to make sure that we are supporting households um, who are in our public schools. I also want to set up our um, our hubs in our in our neighborhood schools so that we, our hubs can be places where families can access social workers access to nutrition and other services they need to stay in their homes and continue to have a good education experience thank Africa. you marcello thank you um so the kids of our district what they need i personally think is a, a really good education a base to start <laughs> not, not tell enough how much I fought the school district of San Francisco for resources for my kids and, and, and for special needs for every single issue. We have a crisis in school district in San Francisco where it doesn't have the resources. They, they do whatever they can with whatever they have. And before the pandemic, before the economic crisis and the homeless situation, my idea was to get corporations to dump funding into the school districts the San Francisco School District, to put the resources on our kids. Because those kids, like I said before, they're gonna stay local, they're gonna be higher local after they go to college, they come back. Um, the idea is just to put as much resources as we can on our kids at School District San Francisco. Thank you. Asha? Thank you. One of the things that's often left out of the conversation of educational needs when people are talking about children and families is uh, those that are zero to five. It's one of, the, one, of the thing, one of the things I've learned the most from working with President Norman Yee, whose support I'm glad uh, and proud to have. He's been a lifelong advocate of children and preschools. Um, we have been a strong supporter of zero to five since we've been on the Board of Supervisors. Actually, my headquarters for my campaign is in the largest nonprofit child care provider in the entire city. Very proud to have worked to ensure that they were able to buy their building and stabilize that. Almost every project that we've worked on in this district, we've ensured that there will be accessible, affordable child care. Another thing that we've done is we don't have direct involvement in the schools usually. Uh, it's usually through the after school and summer programs. But we were very fortunate the very two years that I was, first two years I was in office, uh, we were able to use the Educational Enrichment Fund, ERAF, and we put millions, first year 45 million, and after that additional dollars into supporting our teachers and paras and educators in the school system. Right now, I'm one of the, one of the sponsors of and supporters of Prop J which will open up at, at, in year one, 50 to $60 million a year for our school system. And I'm very proud to say that I'm uh, a parent of two public school kids uh, and have the most children in public school uh, on the Board of Supervisors. So we have to continue to support that. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with John. How will you ensure that residents of District 11 have access to services and resources that will help them meet their basic needs as they struggle with the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Well, uh, for ensuring that our residents have access to the services that we need, uh, it's really about uh, the budget, the city budget, and making sure that the city budget uh, works uh, for working people. Um, one of the biggest issues that uh, I've spent most of my time working on every year has been the city budget when I was in office and prior to that I was an advocate working on the city budget to make sure that we were building more resources for children, youth and families and seniors in particular. Um, and in 2009 and 2010 I got to chair the budget committee and lead the city through the balancing process uh, overcoming two 
uh, $500 million uh, budget deficits each year. So I know a little bit about how to move money around and to protect services. And we need to have this type of experience, especially now that uh, Chair Fewer is leaving the Board of Supervisors to actually craft our budget so we are preserving the best of San Francisco, our working people to make sure that we're able to provide these services. I've actually moved money from major departments where there's a lot of waste. These have included the police department into health and human services, into our parks and open spaces, into senior programs, into after school programs, early child education programs, and the housing eviction protection programs. We have two measures on the ballot that will help with that, Prop I and K, that can help families stay in their homes and hope we can pass those as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Marcello. Uh, so this is the case where we have to start uttering where the money is going in the city of San Francisco. Because in a $12 billion budget, there is a lot of money that's being wasted. And because of that, we need to figure out where that money is going to be able to put resources into the communities that need it the most. And, and this is the part of that also, um, I believe the politicians have forgotten about, you know, the, the main issue, the lack of resources for decades into the, the poor communities. And we have to start protecting those communities and dumping the resources that are really needed, desperately needed into those resources with the main issue of COVID trying to come back uh, from, from such a pandemic and such a tough time that our residents are going through. Thank you. Thank you. Asha? So during this crisis, uh, this, was, this was not about theory anymore. This was about action. And we had to go, in, basically over the last eight months, my entire job has been about leading during this crisis and ensuring that District 11 and the entire city had the resources, support, and safety net that we need. We've opened up and helped to support three uh, meal distribution sites in District 11. We've distributed over 10,000 masks um, to individuals in 20,000 gloves and gallons of disinfectant supporting our small businesses. We work with the mayor um, and the board to ensure that there was a $10 million, at least $10 million in funding for undocumented families who've been completely left out of uh, the, uh, uh, the recovery funds that, were, that have been uh, created. We fought for, advocated, and ensured that all essential workers in the city, all city workers would have access to 80 hours of sick leave 80 hours of presumptive injury leave, and on the private sector, uh, worked with Supervisor Marr to ensure that there was an additional 80 hours for, for uh, businesses that had over uh, 100 employees or more. Uh, we worked to ensure, as I said earlier, that there would be anti-eviction uh, legislation to ensure people can stay in their homes. And now we're working very aggressively to open the economy back up safely to ensure people can go back to work. We also work with our family child care providers to create a million dollar fund to keep them going so they would have grants and access to provide accessible, affordable child care. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with Marcelo. What are your plans to revitalize commercial districts in District 11, not just along Mission and Geneva, but also along Broad Street and San Jose Avenue? Investment, investment, investment. It's, it comes down always to that. Where the money is going to come from the budget to be able to produce for those small businesses and for training for people who want to open their own businesses. Somebody who's coming to City Hall to open their own business has all the opportunity and everything that they can dream of. It. But if you don't help them stay open, those businesses will not uh, go anywhere. We have to develop that part of our neighbors. We have to help them to stay in business after they open it for as long as they want. Thank you. Asha? Thank you. Um, when I first uh, was elected, we initiated what was called the Excelsior Outer Mission Planning Process, went on for a little over a year and a half. As part of that process, one of the goals was to create a community benefits district for Excelsior along the Mission and Geneva corridor. But then the second phase of that was intended to focus on the broad Randolph corridor, again, which has been completely 
overlooked and neglected for a very long time. I was presented with a plan by, by individuals that talked about trying to rezone uh, the entire broad Randolph corridor. I was against that plan. It was not community driven. And it was more about real, really about creating uh, investment opportunities that would have essentially led to uh, gentrification and displacement. So we need to ensure that whatever plans we put in order will be community driven and ensure the, that we're protecting existing businesses, but also attracting new businesses that will complement. I'm very proud to say over the last uh, four years that I've been in office, we've gotten dozens of businesses to open up along the quarter. There's still a very high number of uh, vacancies along Broad Randolph, as well as the Mission in Geneva, um, but we're continuing to every day. One of the first things I did as a result of the Excelsior Outer Mission planning process is we changed the zoning to allow for arts programming. Arts programming was not permitted along storefronts. And that change in and of itself helped get a few businesses in there. And we're going to continue to do work like that. Thank you. John? Thank you. Uh, it's one of the biggest questions we're facing right now is how to revitalize our commercial corridor that has been hit so hard during the pandemic and the subsequent economic crisis. Uh, we have the huge issue of Amazon creating a zombie of our commercial corridors and our livelihoods all over the world. And we have to figure out new ways of actually doing business in our, our neighborhood corridors. Uh, one of the things that uh, I want to do is looking at is passing Prop B. Uh, the voters should pass Prop B so we can actually have a real focus on making our corridor inviting and having doing sanitation and making sure our corridor is clean and we're picking up garbage. I also want to make sure that we're looking at our empty spaces and how we can use them effectively uh, doing uh, mutual aid work, but also creating shared space that a lot of our immigrant businesses can actually operate in. Our city nickel and dimes, uh, a lot of our small businesses with fees that are very random and I want to eliminate all of those temporarily while we're in this economic crisis. I also want to make sure that we are creating a grant program to support businesses and not just you know on Mission and Geneva but all over uh, the district including Broad and Randolph Street. More than anything we need to make sure we're putting sinking in real resources and building from the grassroots up what our corridor is really needing and put the metrics uh, before us defined by our community and not by the city. The city has a one-size-fits-all approach to how we support our businesses and what works on Divisadero doesn't work on Broad and Randolph Street and we need to do something different working hand-in-hand -hand with our residents and shop owners here in District 11. Thank you and now we'll be going to the final question. And we'll start with Asha. Proposition 15 is the California state ballot measure that would change the method for assessing property taxes on commercial properties with the goal of creating additional funding for schools and local communities. If this proposition passes and additional community funding becomes available, how would you propose that San Francisco use the increased revenue. Thank you. Well, I, I, you know, as a proud supporter of the San Francisco Labor Council, I, I fully support Prop 15 to change the, the split roll tax. Um, this will infuse millions of dollars into our schools and community. I think that the first priority has to be the educational system, the public education system. Um, we would go through a process of working hand in hand with our school board, uh, community organizations. I also think that there would have to be a conversation from our uh, Human Rights Commission, uh, Director Cheryl Davis, and looking at everything through an equity lens. I think that's one of the things that, that I'm proudest of is my time on the Board of Supervisor as well, has been really elevating, enhancing, and ensuring that the Office of, of Racial Equity, which is part of the HRC, has more power in the work that we do is looking at things through, those, through that lens. Um, one of the saddest things about COVID right now has been um, expanding and, 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 and enhancing uh, the achievement gap for brown and black students in our city and those that don't have the support that they need. We created uh, six learning hubs here in District 11, uh, but schools and community first would be a wonderful opportunity to ensure our public schools have the support that they need. Community would be involved in that process HRC would have to be an integral part of that process and ensuring that uh, those schools that are underperforming, those schools that need the additional resources, and our educators would have the support and financial support that they need. 
Thank you. John? Yes, uh, really important question. Um, we're hoping that you know Prop 15 will pass, so everyone please vote uh, yes on Prop 15 all across the state of California. Um, I am uh, proud to say that I am uh, the sole endorsed uh, candidate for District 11 by the United Educators of San Francisco, who are teaching our youth, uh, paras and teachers uh, in our public school system in San Francisco. I'm also endorsed by AFT 2121, who are our city college uh, professors. And I agree, we need to be putting our greatest investments uh, in our public education system and in city college. Uh, City College can be a linchpin for making sure that we're actually preparing people uh, for the next, uh, for the recovery and making sure that we're building for a sustainable future and how we can resource our industries with qualified uh, trained uh, workers uh, who can help rebuild San Francisco, our housing, our transit, our systems to make sure that everything's working well. Uh, this is the work of the future and uh, Prop uh, 15 can provide vital funding for that as well. We also need to make sure that our Dep Department of Public Health has the resources to help protect people during the pandemic. So ensuring that we have adequate testing and contact tracing uh, during the pandemic, uh, and also to make sure that PPE can be distributed well uh, throughout our neighborhoods so that we can be protected against the spread as well. Those are the areas that I would wanna make sure are, are, are um, funded uh, with uh, revenue from Prop 15. Thank you, Marcelo. So revenue from Prop 15, uh, personally, I think that need to be used to support, uh, first of all, education, which is one of the biggest issues before this pandemic, but also housing. The people that have suffered the most, that lost their jobs, they are about to go out, uh, out of unemployment. And if we don't support those people with funding to stay in San Francisco, they will be homeless. It will create a much wider problem later for, for the city, for the residents. We need to dump funding into the people that need the most. The, the, the one, uh, uh, one level fits all doesn't work. We need to go case by case, which implicates a huge amount of case uh, load for, for the workers that are behind the desk checking out who needs the help. It's gonna be a monumental task to try to help everybody at once. We need to put together uh, we need to work with common sense and we need to work hard to be able to um, approach this main issue. The money, hopefully, not for in the past, the money will be there, which is need to use it, use, it, use it wisely. Thank you. Thank you. Now we come to the candidate's closing statement. We will do the closing statements in reverse alphabetical order. And remember that you have 90 seconds. The order will be Marcelo Colusi, John Avalos, and Asa Safai. Marcelo? Please vote for me. I'm an immigrant who came to this country with nothing. I didn't even speak English. I came in a bicycle from Argentina, 15 countries, almost 20,000 miles. I have heart and soul, and I just don't give up. Mainly, uh, both your heart, both who you believe in, both for me better, but um, I am trying to change things for the better. Things have to have a drastic change in our city. If we don't do that, we're gonna keep seeing the same deterioration in, in what we have seen until today uh, and, and our beloved San Francisco. Thank you very much for your opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for John? this evening. And it's been really great to share uh, my experience and aspirations for elective office. Um, you know, when I ran in for reelection in 2012, I didn't have an opponent. Um, and I really missed the opportunity to uh, reconnect with people in my district. Um, and I'm doing that now, actually. And it's the most incredible experience of my life, most humbling experience I've ever had. Uh, this campaign is rooted in our diverse community here in District 11, and uh, I wanna be a supervisor who can work with everyone, regardless of people's political point of view, 
uh, I want to be a supervisor who can actually share uh, the city's resources and the pulpit that we have together uh, to make sure that City Hall can look out after us and take care of our needs. Um, I'm proud to say that I have the number one endorsement of the Democratic Party. I also have uh, the sole endorsement of the District 11 uh, Democratic Club. I'm supported by the California Nurses Association, number one, the National Union of Healthcare Workers, number one. I'm supported, as I mentioned before, by AFT 2121 uh, and the UESF educators in our city college and our SF Unified School District. Uh, these are partnerships that I want to bring together so we can have a common voice to make sure that our city is looking out after us. I have great experience in doing that before, and I look forward to doing it again with your support. Thank you. Thank you. Asha? Thank you. As the current supervisor of District 11, this has been a wonderful four years. I'm very proud to say that we have made progress. When I first ran for office, I heard over and over again that people were tired of being treated like the forgotten part of San Francisco. In four years, we've been able to get over $600 million of direct investment, some of which I talked about tonight. We're building park, we've revitalized parked and playgrounds, renovated pool, we're building a brand new library, we're building almost 600 units of, of housing, 65% of that uh, will be for affordable for working families. We've planted over 2000 trees, no other part of San Francisco comes close to that. And we're doing it on a daily basis. We've worked in collaboration with Mayor, first Mayor Lee and now Mayor Breed, and they have made District 11 a priority and people feel it and I hear it on a daily basis. When I first ran for office, I knocked on 7,000 doors. I haven't been able to do that this time because of COVID, but I've been talking to people on a daily basis as much as we can over the last month. And it's been certainly rewarding. I'm very proud to say I have, you know, a very diverse uh, background of support. I'm the sole endorsed candidate of San Francisco Labor Council. I have Speaker Pelosi, uh, sole support. I have Senator Dianne Feinstein, and Congresswoman Jackie Speer, Mayor Breed, uh, Supervisor Catherine Stephanie, Aaron Peskin, and Supervisor Walton, along with the San Francisco Building Trades. And I'm going to continue to fight for working people in the next four years if I'm reelected. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of myself and the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, our thanks to the candidates for participating. And thanks to each of you in the audience for taking the time to inform yourself about your choices that you need to make by November 3rd. Please remember to register to vote if you aren't already, aren't already registered and urge others to register. If you've changed your name or you've moved, you need to register again at your new address. And if you'll be voting by mail this year, please be sure that your vote will be counted by ensuring that your ballot is mailed or dropped off at your polling place before November 3rd. Good evening.